What's going on Warriors? We're back. Can't hold us down for long. We're rising up. I love you guys, man. You guys, man. Just incredible. Thank you so much. I cannot believe it. Just this month alone. Um, not this month, but the last 28 days. I checked in my analytics. I've had 47 new subscribers. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you. It means so much to me and me to keep on doing this thing. And I'm sorry for not doing more videos. It's just that it's been really rough. I've literally had three hours, three to four hours to myself a day after I finished the whole day. You know, but today's Friday. We're going to get into it. I want to talk about Batman. Arkham Knight. This is not a review because I've not finished Batman. But I want to talk about some things I find that are good and some things that I find about bad about the game. And I feel it's important to address these things. So, without further ado, Batman Arkham City. <sighs> Arkham Knight. I'm sorry. I don't know. My brain. My brain. I'm trying to think um, five steps ahead. So, what I want to talk about the Arkham Knight. Got it right there, straight off. Was, the game is a really good game. Eyebrow raising amazing. But, the issue I have with it is it's, it's lazy design. The game is so safe. They didn't take any risks. There's no NPCs. There's no sequences that happen outside of a very controlled story. There are so many bits of story that you can do with different enemies. With Riddler. With Firefly. With all these kind of characters that are on the world map with Penguin, with Two-Face and whatever's coming in the DLC. But that's not what I'm referring to. I'm referring outside the story. What is there to do? Nothing. Other than use your grappling hook, glide around Gotham City, go in your car, chase after enemies, chase after the Arkham Knight forces or just street crooks and cars going around. There's nothing other to do and fight. Which the fighting is exactly the same as Arkham City. Exactly the same. There's no difference between the two. The difference <coughs> comes when you're not fighting. When you're literally just walking. I prefer just walking around Gotham City. Than I do actually fighting. Because it looks so cinematic. When you see the rain effects on Sashin on Batman. When you see it on the city streets. When you call the Batman Bill. And the Batman Bill just comes and you just jump into it. Or you just... Jump off a high building and you call the Batman build. That kind of stuff is incredible. It's absolutely amazing. But outside of that, there's nothing else. In terms of interaction with the world. In terms of moving parts. NPCs. Um, combat. Like, um, a combat system. Even Witcher has got a combat system. With um, the two swords. You've got a silver sword and a normal steel sword. Which you use is like the st silver sword, of course, for supernatural enemies. A normal steel sword for human enemies. You have all your fire. You have shield. You have active shield. You have axie to control enemies, stun enemies, or manipulate enemies. You have yarden to seal enemies, which is like the seal. You can slow enemies. Um, there's damage points, which makes um, um, enemies' armor weaker or stronger. Different attacks have different strengths. It's so different with every single different type of armor, with every different type of potion or alchemist or alchemetics, alchemy substance you use. That's Witcher. Yeah, that I'm talking about. You know, there's so many different moving parts. Whereas with Batman, there's no moving parts when you go into combat. It's just that the normal attacking and then bat, 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 punch and kick, punch, kick. Do moves, do, does, um, use your uh, special attack. It goes into like a little kind of like cinematic move. And then you do something else. Outside of that, there's nothing else. They played it so safe, so safe. They don't want to take any risk of any moving parts. So of course nothing is going to go wrong with Batman. But even then... Something still go wrong with enemies. Like when you punch them or kick them. They start flailing out or glitching out. Stuff like that. And that's just the reaction. That's just game physics. Like when you hit an enemy it glitches out there. Very rarely. But it does happen. Yeah. And I don't understand how that happens. Because you're not really. There's no moving parts. How are you messing up there? 
it's so odd to me. It's so odd to me. Now, I don't care when it comes to things like when you, is Batman killing enemies or not when he runs them over, when he kills them, kills them or not. They put an excuse for it. He electrocutes them or he sends them flying or it's like getting hit by an angry gorilla. Whatever. Whatever. I'm over it. Yeah. But there's certain things where something, when something does happen, that is semi-dynamic. Or semi real time, it even buckles there. Like the game is not in real time, because you can tell. Like when say you grab an enemy, and say you try to, to um, interrogate them, right? Everything that happens in the background will just shut off. You'll be like invincible in like an invincible barrier, and everything that was happening in real time, once you come out of it, is gone. The end. The, the scene is clear. It just shows that it's not in real time. Whereas uh, I can respect the Witcher, because at least in Witcher, things happen in real time. At least when you talk to somebody, that person's still going to be in the background. Yeah, it may glitch out because an enemy might walk through you, or stuff like that, or they might kind of move you while you're in the cutscene when in Witcher. But at least they try to put more moving parts and make things happen more organically. Where Batman, they didn't try that. They took no risks whatsoever. As I said, the story's incredible. The characters are amazing. Jason Todd, Tim Drake. Jason Todd, Tim Drake, Dick Grayson. I think that's them. The Robins. Robin, Nightwing, Red Hood. Selena, um, Finney. Catwoman. Um, Harvey, um, Two-Face. Um, Penguin. You know... Joker, Arkham Knight, Scarecrow, all these characters, absolutely incredible, eyebrow raising, amazing. But my problem is, outside of the story, what is there? Nothing. It's lazy, and I thought that's what's the problem. This is one of the problems with the video game industry, is that a lot of developers are going to see the success of Batman and see this as a successful module to use, when it's not. There's no pushing in innovation. Imagine if... In Japan or Asia, they adopted this. Imagine if Final Fantasy focused on this. It'd be bad. It'd be terrible. It'd be terrible. And let me point you out to another thing, yeah, because they know this. When they first, when they first show Batman actual in-game cutscenes, um, in-game gameplay, like a week and a half before the game's release, that's unacceptable. That is absolutely unacceptable. They say we didn't want to show you um, the in-game or the combat because we didn't want to do any spoilers. Sorry, what's more of a spoiler? Story, showing us story elements or showing us in-game cuts, uh, in-game combat. Yeah, so don't try to twist words and play with us because we see through that shit. Yeah, what I respect with game like Witcher, the reason I'm using Batman and Witcher as an example is because those are the two first... To me, big, original, current-gen video games. They're the big two right now. Witcher 3 and Batman. At least with Witcher, they tried. At least they went in with NPCs that have their own story. They have their own code in them. They have their own AI. When the main character, Geralt, interacts with anyone, something dynamic happens. He's got his own story. He's got his own facial expressions. He's got his own way of interacting with them. And they interact with him. Like their facial expressions. And their voices. And they talk to you. So at least there's moving parts to Witcher. Where if Batman's got none of that. There's no one to interact with on the world map. Yeah there are certain things that will happen dynamically. Like you'll be going flying through the streets. And then the, like, the, uh, the, the man bat will just grab you. And that will shock the hell out of you. There are certain things that will just happen spontaneously. But even that is controlled. Because it depends on where you are in the city that the game will put that a, like a bubble of that sequence will happen. Whether you go on a rooftop or whatever you do, that sequence will happen. It's controlled through story. So it's not dynamic. It's not real time. Now, I hope this doesn't happen for every single game. I hope so. I hope not. I hope not. I hope with games like, and I do believe games like Mass Effect and all these kind of games, but we do see games like the Mad Max game. That's copying the same module. 
So people are starting to believe that this is right because Batman is going to be so successful. And I'm scared. I'm scared of it. Because when you look at a game like, for example, Bayonetta. Bayonetta 1. Bayonetta 2 looks better than Bayonetta 1. But Bayonetta 1 is a much better game. Platinum Games actually made Bayonetta 2 a simpler game. And in doing so, they betrayed what Bayonetta is. But Bayonetta still got bigger claim. Bayonetta 2 got bigger acclaim than Bayonetta 1 ever did. And I feel like games like, like, like Platinum Games is going to believe that's the right way to go. Because everyone approves and they make more money. And everyone likes them more because they made the game simpler. So what simpler is the key? Making games more easier? Imagine if Final Fantasy. Like look at a game like Final Fantasy. Yeah. When you release Final Fantasy, they show you gameplay first. Witcher. They showed you gameplay. First they showed you the CG trailer, right? But... Shortly afterwards, they showed you gameplay. They've literally showed us gameplay almost a year before the game came out. Whereas with Batman, they only showed you gameplay two, two to less than two weeks yeah, before the game came out. There's a problem. It's a problem that we have to address and we have to show these people it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable to do lazy and sloppy game design. Whereas there's no... Like with Batman, there's nothing that can go wrong. There's nothing because there's no codes, there's no moving parts. When you look at a game like Street Fighter, because there's always frame data and different damage and different um, hits advantage and block advantage, like there's an advantage on block, advantage on stun, depending on the range of the attack and how the combos are one frame link or two frame link. And every single character's got different kind of mechanics. Something's always going to go wrong. It's like a moving machine. Whereas with Batman, it's a moving machine, but it's a very simple moving machine. That's not good. That's not good at all. So, I want to hear what you guys got to say about this. I want to hear your opinions. I want to hear your thoughts. If you understand what I'm saying, if you don't understand what I'm saying, I want to hear you. Okay, Warriors. The ball is in your court now. Let's do this thing. To my next video, stay tuned, I'm going to keep pushing forward. Okay, Warriors, take care.